Um, welcome. Uh, this is Guten Ready for the Guten Apocalypse. My name is Jen McFarland, and this is my colleague Brian DeConnick. Um, I'm actually going to pass this off to Brian right now because this is his favorite slide, and I cannot deny him his joy. This is my favorite slide. Um, so if you get nothing else from this talk, I want you to get these two very important definitions. The first definition is portmanteau, which is a word or a morpheme whose form and meaning are derived from blending two or more distinct forms together. So you take two words and smush them together. So like breakfast and lunch become brunch, smoke and fog become smog. Uh, and then the second definition is portmanteau. Uh, this is something that if you listen to the podcast The Illusionist, you may be familiar with. It's a portmanteau you should feel bad about. So that's something like bromance or edutainment or every single word we're going to use in this presentation, like guten Apocalypse. We know, we feel shame, we are aware, but we're going to do it anyway. So uh, let's get to it. Yeah, OK. Our Gut introduction. Gut introduction. OK, he loves these things, and I'm terrible at them. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about us. We're from NC State, and uh, we're going to give you sort of the breakdown of the, the day the music died, when the guten shit got guten real. Um, our user testing, talking about what we're doing on our campus to get people on board, some of our planning and scheduling, and uh, finish up with why we're guten excited. So a little bit about us. We're located in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are a land-grant institution that's been around a long time. Uh, 40,000 plus students, faculty, and staff all, all across the state. And we also have a satellite campus in Prague, and 11 colleges and our graduate uh, school. And we made it up here because Number one, Brian uh, works for us, but he works remote from Boston. And I have family here, and so we're like our second home. So we thought we'd come out and share our, our talk with you guys. So uh, more about us specifically. Um, we are OIT Design and Web Services. That's our name, and we're housed in Central IT. We maintain several major campus multi-site environments. If you were in uh, Rachel Cherry's WordPress and Education talk, you heard uh, lots of themes, including multi-site's a big deal for our higher ed. Um, and we support like I said, three or four major campus-wide multi-sites. Uh, we also do website design, development, support, training, maintenance, and support for our campus-based clients. Um, we're all over the map with WordPress on campus. We're delightful. This is us. Uh, you can see that Brian is remote here. He's our BriPad. Uh, and then we have Lauren and Miles. And uh, for those of you who are attending High Ed Web, which here's another plug, that's a great conference. It's in Sacramento this year. Um, Lauren and Miles will be there. So go up and give them a hug, and they'll be like, who are you? Um, so if you are in higher ed, and quick show of hands, how many of you are higher ed people? There's my peeps. All right. Big institutions, lots of moving parts. I don't have to sell you on this. But WordPress is fantastic for that. We're, we're really sold on it, albeit it not, uh, it's not a campus mandate for us. But we think it's a, a wonderful tool. And uh, it's, it is used all over our campus in various pockets. But change is scary, especially in higher ed, especially when you're dealing with 40,000 plus people at a time. Um, and we uh, feel like we're uniquely positioned in central IT to be able to solve some of the problems that uh, we foresee both with Gutenberg and with other uh, sort of situations. We have the flexibility to try both technical and non-technical solutions with our campus. And we're very lucky that we have a lot of support from our management um, who agree with us that the top priority is to serve the university and our community as a whole. So whatever we build for us, we know that we're really building for the rest of campus as well. And again, that's a large group. So this is actually from our mission statement. Our, uh, our goals are to uh, work in collaborative IT services, solutions, and strategies to assist the, the state, the university, and the nation. Um, and that is something that we carry with us whenever we're planning ahead and, and doing our work. All of that is to say, we are a four-person team. We're incredibly busy already. The last thing we needed was some sort of major crazy WordPress change. Um, but we know um, when we are planning something that we're going to be focused on the, the long-term health and solution of, uh, our, uh, of, of that solution being used for both our campus and beyond. So, Brian. Right, so uh, we knew Gutenberg was coming. We try to stay abreast of all the WordPress news out in the world. We try to pay attention. Um, we hang out in the Make WordPress Slack channels. Um, but we didn't know when Gutenberg was coming. And uh, in April of 2017, I spoke about something we were super excited about at the time, our fancy futuristic shortcode strategy uh, at WordCamp Raleigh. Um, and right at the end of the talk, I mentioned Gutenberg, and I'm going to try to play a little video clip of, of that. OK. 
Okay, so our bit, there we go. So I'm not going to play anymore. Um, that's plenty to show that uh, we did not think Gutenberg was going to be a thing we would have to think about in 2017 or 2018. We were thinking it was going to be more of a 2020, 2021 sort of time frame. You know, it's going to take a few years for things to happen. Um, lots of time for us to figure out what's going on. Lots of time for us to play with our fancy short codes and shortcake and all that. Uh, then I went to WordCamp US, uh, which was in December of 2017. And uh, Matt Mullenweg spoke, and I'll play a little clip of that. Just thinking about it. I think we need to talk to one more iterations. So we've done 18 so far, um, for about four months. So, cool. And so I put this back into around April for when I think that this will be ready for the, the widest audience, even wider than it is seeing it now. So I love the way Matt says, cool, like it's no big deal, you know, just this major change to WordPress, it's going to be ready by April. Uh, that was not what we expected. And in that session, I uh, was on my phone and I sent Jen a message in Slack, and this is the message I sent her. Oh darn, um, spoiler alert, I did not use the word darn. Sometimes state employees use bad, use bad language. You know, sometimes we have feelings. Uh, <laughs> Matt Mullenweg says he thinks Gutenberg will be ready and out for everyone in April. Um, in hindsight, uh, using the word ready is a nice little wiggle room. There's a big difference between ready and uh, merged into WordPress core and 5.0 is released. But uh, that made us feel a little panic. Uh, it made us feel a little like this was happening to all of our plans for the next two years. So when we say the Gutenpocalypse, this is what we have in mind. Um, <laughs> so everything changed all of a sudden in a dramatic way. And um, initially, we had this day or so of feeling like it's going to be all right. We knew this was coming. We just have to you know, think through the problem and, and move on. Um, then we realized this is not fine. Uh, this is a major change to WordPress that we have not even started to think about in the way we need to think about it, and we need to like learn JavaScript real fast. Um, so there's a little bit of panic, and then we got to work. Um, and so we're going to talk about uh, what we did to get our campus ready. Uh, yeah. So the, the, he sort of glossed over that that part where um, we jumped into it and started doing some work. There was certainly some uh, panic and some phase where we uh, briefly dis just considered really what we were getting into. And there's certainly a case for denial. I'm hardly the first person probably that you've heard talk about putting your head in the sand and pretending like this isn't happening. Um, there are certainly technical challenges. Again, Matt talked about uh, JS and learn it deeply, and we were not that. We weren't doing that. Um, big changes to it, all of our existing themes and plugins. We are none of a, the four of us developers at our heart. There's no computer science degrees there. We have some sociology. There's like some history. There's weird stuff in there. We're get, not getting by with a little bit of PHP and Googling anymore. And we're also going to be learning this in a changing environment that doesn't really have tons of documentation for what's coming out with Gutenberg. We also have conceptual challenges of changing how we think about what we're delivering in WordPress. Uh, we also teach classes, so it's not just learning in blocks. We're also teaching in blocks. And we have to think about how we are developing things for our clients, how we're explaining our things to our clients, um, how, as Brian mentioned, we're deep into short codes. I thought shortcake was going to get rolled into that core. Um, and so we're reworking our content and our content strategy that we've sort of been focused on. And then also for us in higher ed, organizational challenges, which, um, as many of you in higher ed know, is some of the biggest, uh, some of the biggest problems. Educating campus developers. We have lots of developers spread across campus. Training site admins and the content editors. Um, giving the campus IT help desks resources to help with this transition. Um, talking about working on support materials. And all of this is an extra challenge for us as a very decentralized campus. We have IT help desks in most of the colleges. Again, developers in most of the colleges. So we have a lot of organizational challenges. 
Plus, it's hard, and I don't want to do it. I've got other stuff going on. All right. Um, but then there's lots of good reasons to do it, so I had to get the wine in. Um, as we mentioned before, we, we want to be informed. We want to make smart choices about how and when to make this upgrade for our campus. This is a great opportunity to learn JavaScript. And as it happens, we do have a little more JavaScript expertise than we thought we did. Surprise, it's hiding there all along. So, um, and you probably, we certainly did have developers who are interested in learning about that. Um, and our thought is that, you know, Guten coding in 2018 means 2019 will go that much smoother, uh, presumably. Some of those conceptual opportunities, um, you know, if you went to the great talk that uh, John, thank you, John did, my brain just went totally blank, um, about chunky versus blobby content, we think this opportunity to jump into chunky content is fan freaking fantastic. And so we're really excited about finding some new solutions that can make our content more multi purpose and then, you know, using that and teaching that to our users across campus. It's a great excuse to retire some old code. I know we all have some of that laying around. Um, and again, for organizational uh, opportunities, it lets us control our timeline and priorities by getting ahead of it. Uh, it lets us be a resource for the rest of campus, and it turns out a lot of other folks in the community, which is, has been great. Um, and WordPress is built on open source and community, and we are happy to uh, contribute back to that, to provide meaningful feedback when we can, um, and to, to give useful documentation and tools. And we'll talk about some of those as we go. So all of this to say, there's never a good time for a big change, especially in higher ed, but we think that this is a very good big change and we're enthusiastic about embracing it. Uh, we know that we as a campus will not go uh, live with Gutenberg the day 5.0 is released. It doesn't matter if it's you know, tomorrow or a year from now, we're, you know, we're going to um, give it a little bit of time to settle, we're going to still have to transition some people. Um, but preparing with an aggressive timeline is going to help us do this right and make sure that everybody's ready, if not the day of, the next day. So the first thing we wanted to figure out is uh, this is a major change to WordPress. What's this actually going to look like? Um, how bad is this going to be for our users? Uh, or maybe will it not be bad at all? Um, so we started with some user testing. Uh, I want to have a disclaimer up front. Uh, we did this in January. There have been a lot of very big and meaningful and good changes to Gutenberg since January. So some of this has evolved. I think a lot of the things I'm going to mention are still relevant, but um, maybe less so than they were at the time. And also, if you are supporting a large organization, whether you're in higher ed or somewhere else, I 100% recommend you do your own user testing. You learn a lot from watching the people you support uh, work with a new tool, figure out how they problem solve, um, and you know, come up with support strategies that you, that you think might be useful for you. Um, so we conducted this, like I said, in January 2018. We mainly focused on power users, so people who use WordPress every day and people whose you know, regular day-to-day uh, uh, -day activities are going to be most impacted. Um, we gave them a 30-minute exercise where we gave them some content to recreate using Gutenberg. Uh, we wrote a long blog post about it, and it was probably longer than it needed to be. I get a little wordy. Uh, if you are interested, you can read all about it. But don't read right now, because I'm going to tell you about it. Um, so the first thing we discovered is that no one knows what to call anything or where anything is. Um, the big thing there is like this little three-dot button that shows up on the right-hand side next to blocks. Um, our users weren't really sure what to call that. And so when they were trying to say, I'm looking for this thing, they would get to a point where they were trying to name it, and they didn't know what to name it. Um, uh, we had somebody come up with mini hamburger options, which is not what I would choose, but we figured out what they meant by that. Um, it's not always clear when to choose which block. So this whole idea of blocks is a new thing in WordPress, and uh, knowing whether something is a quote block or a pull quote block or just a paragraph block that has some styling associated with it, um, some formatting, is a, is a big question mark for a lot of users who are coming in with preconceived notions about how content works in, in WordPress. Um, of the users we tested, and again, this was in January 2018, of the users we tested, nobody noticed the additional block settings in the right-hand sidebar without getting a hint from us. Um, there is a lot of power, there's a lot of tools in that sidebar, and uh, it took a while for people to catch on that they could use that to do things uh, to their blocks. And then this is more of a subtle point. Um, 
this question of whether or not they needed to highlight the text that they were trying to format when they were using the options in the right-hand sidebar. Uh, there's some something sort of intuitive about that, the way we, we highlight text to go to the top toolbar to make it bold or italicized. Um, if you're going to change the font size for a paragraph uh, or something like that, do you need to highlight it before you go over to the right-hand sidebar? Uh, that's, the answer to that is no, and it's not a big deal. If you highlight the text, it doesn't change anything, but uh, what this tells us is that there's uh, a lack of intuition about how this new user interface works. Um, there's lots of things that people are going to have to spend some time figuring out, and we need to make space for them to figure that out, and we'll talk about that more in just a moment. And then really our big takeaway is sometimes you have to remind users, try a different block. Uh, the block that you are trying to use right now isn't doing the thing that you think it should be doing. Try a different one. WordPress is forgiving. There's a revision history. You're not going to break anything too tragically. It's okay to experiment. And that's, I think, maybe a key message to take to any users that you support is just try it. Tr uh, take the time to build that intuition. So with the users that we tested, it took them generally about 20 minutes and a lot of trial and error, a lot of that space to play and, and explore to get the hang of the new editor. Not perfect, not like Gutenberg masters, but people who could create content and publish it pretty comfortably. Uh, the problem for us on a campus of 40,000 people is how many support tickets is that going to uh, generate when you have 20 minutes per user to try to figure this out. So we knew we needed some sort of a plan for uh, how to, how to transition people to make that go as seamlessly as possible for us, because we're four people and we don't have a, all day long to answer support tickets like this. Um, so I would mentioned earlier that we mainly tested with power users. What's interesting is when we did test with people who were less familiar with WordPress, uh, they also tended to be people who were less familiar with sort of web interfaces in general. They didn't spend as much time using applications online. And we expected that they would sort of pick it up quickly because they didn't have any preconceived notions about how WordPress was supposed to work. We didn't really see that. In instead, we saw people really struggle with Gutenberg at first. And what we're chalking that up to, um, our, our guess is it's the, it's the shift from what we, we don't even think about how wordy the classic editor is. There, there's a lot of text on the screen to tell you what different things do. And then you'd make the transition from that to Gutenberg, and this is an older screenshot of Gutenberg, but you make that jump to Gutenberg where there's just a lot less text on the screen, there's a lot more iconography. Um, now, a lot of text shows up now when you hover over buttons, when you hover over uh, these, these icons, but that's a jump that people who maybe are less familiar with this kind of interface are going to have to get used to. So again, making that space for people to, uh, to gain that intuition. So, uh, Next comes training. Um, yeah, so we had uh, a lot of work. We knew, uh, as Brian alluded to, that you know, uh, 40,000 users times 20 minutes, and we have to try to figure out how to communicate with people and give them that space to play. Um, we knew, again, Gutenberg uh, is replacing the, the classic editor. It's been around for 12 years. That's a long time. That's a lot of love. That's a lot of habit. Um, and preparing for that kind of big change for all those users is tough. So we were prepared that there may be some need to overcome resistance. Um, I will say there's a little more resistance, uh, I think, in the community than there is on our campus, which is a little interesting and not quite what we expected. Um, but again, those power users are, uh, have a lot of habits, ingrained habits, um, and they're sort of struggling with making this transition sometimes. Uh, so, you know, they made me a manager, they sent me a training, and they gave me stuff like, acronyms that I feel the need to share and use now. Um, but this was one of the things in our change management discussing a discussion about um, you know, overcoming resistance to change and uh, how we make an effort to, uh, to move past changes, big changes, or get people on board. So it's an equation, and Brian loves this because he's a math major. Um, you have to have or explain or address some of the dissatisfaction, dissatisf wow, that word got hard, dissatisfaction with how things are currently. Um, provide a vision for what's possible and describe some of the first steps to give people some comfort with, you know, um, beginning that process to change. And in theory, these things together will overcome resistance. And so for us, we decided to take a step back and look at our campus and we kind of broke it into three audiences that we were going to need to uh, address these things for. And those audience first uh, are content creators and of course that's the largest chunk of campus. 
Um, and we started by preparing for uh, training for them and uh, addressing some of these things like why is WordPress changing? A lot of our users have no idea this is coming and certainly don't understand why. Uh, how it's changing, what's not changing, which is almost as important as what is changing, is sitting them down and saying, hey, don't panic. These things remain as they have been. Here's where you're going to see changes. What are blocks and what do they mean to me? And these uh, things, in part, address some of those issues to overcoming those, those obstacles for change, right? Like explaining um, not, necessarily, not necessarily that they're dissatisfied with how things are, but explaining why things could be better, right? And then also providing um, some examples of blocks to, to give a vision of what's possible. For our site admins on campus, again, we wanted to talk about the same things, but also um, what are my options for choosing to upgrade? I am a site admin. This is a, a huge change for me. I really want to have a good handle on making this transition. And then again, will my theme work with Gutenberg? Um, How is that going to affect my day-to-day -day, uh, processes? And our campus developers, who again I mentioned we have developers in uh, units all across campus, um, their questions are more, will the themes that I support work with Gutenberg? And if not, what do I need to do to be fixing that? Um, how do block templates work? Should I be building my own custom blocks? Or, or how do I if I need them? So addressing all of these issues, um, we decided that we would work on um, training and uh, um, all these other things for all three of those groups. So first, being the hands-on experience, um, again, these things help to explain first steps and give people an idea of what's coming. Um, hints and reminders give that vision of what's possible and examples of uh, what they can do. And then time to prepare, as we mentioned before, it's going to take a little bit of working through things to be comfortable with it. So for this training, we started uh, with what we called Guten Day. We really can't get away from the portmanteaus. I mean, that's not even a portmanteau. That's just a prefix, right? Like, there's something wrong with my whole team loves them. Um, so we did this for campus developers. We had about 30, 35 people there, um, including some from off campus, so others in our community. Um, and that was March 2nd, so we were really rushing that in. We shared all the stuff that we had done up to that point. We also set up uh, time for a React crash course, which failed utterly because guess what? You have to have Node installed first, and we just weren't prepared. It was a thing. Um, but it was also a good opportunity for us to kick off um, our NC State Blocks plugin. And Brian's going to talk about that more. But this is a, a great opportunity for us to help, uh, again, lead change and um, work by example. We've been using short codes, but we're, of course, like, hey, short codes can be blocks. Let's make this happen. And so we're well underway with that. But that was when we got that started. After Guten Day, um, that in part gave us a good sense for some of the questions that we were going to get, even from the less educated users. Um, and so we started teaching the classes on Gutenberg for content creators and Gutenberg for site administrators um, and offering basics and then hands-on exercises and uh, working through sort of upgrade scenarios. Um, some of the hands-on experience that we wanted to offer, and you are welcome to use these as well. You can use those links. Um, we have a uh, Guten site. Dude, you really use it everywhere. <laughs> Um, at ohtdesign.ncsu.edu slash Gutenberg. This does require that you are an NC State faculty, staff, or student. You have to log in. It's, it's locked down. But it gives people just a plain WordPress site that is uh, going to have Gutenberg installed so they can build from scratch. There's a few pre-formatted pages in there, and they can start playing around. Um, even more useful is uh, we used Frettenberg by um, Tomjin. I strongly encourage you to go check that out and set this up for your campus. But you can also use ours. This is not locked down. And it's, if you go to that page, it's going to take you to um, just, it's basically a back-end interface for what Gutenberg looks like. And we have that pre-populated with content blocks. You can move stuff around, try stuff out. Uh, very good for demonstrating for our users. Very useful for taking to meetings, um, to meetings with clients, meeting with administrators, anybody to explain, hey, this is what's coming. Here's what you, you know, here, here's an actual physical representation of it so you can understand what we're talking about. Um, addressing hints and reminders, we have been documenting this from day one, and we have all these resources available at go.ncsu.edu slash Gutenberg. Uh, we've started our video tutorials. We only have a couple so far, and knowledge base articles. Those will be in our campus-wide uh, ServiceNow repository so that, again, we and our central help desk and other campus satellite help desks can use those uh, to communicate uh, solutions for this change and the transition. Links to external resources, and we've been blogging about our Guten journey. Um, and we're really excited to see dot tips show up. We think that's a great way to solve, um, as Brian addressed, there's sort of sometimes a lack of um, language in the new interface. 
And I, I love the new interface. I'm happy uh, to not have all the, the verbiage, but the dot tips are really helpful. And uh, we encourage you to grab as much of this stuff as you want. So that's you. Yes. So at this point, everything is sort of this theoretical Gutenberg's going to happen someday. Um, we're trying to get ready for it. At some point, we're actually going to have to start upgrading websites to Gutenberg. And that's where the hard work starts to begin. Um, so, spoiler alert, uh, contrary to what we thought after WordCamp US, WordPress 5.0 was not released in April of 2018, and that's okay. Uh, that may, I say here, more time to prepare is more time to prepare, and that's really what it comes down to. Um, by getting started with this really aggressive timeline of we're going to be ready by April 1st, um, well, we were not ready by April 1st, but that put us in the good mindset for, you know, we, we want to hit the ground running and learn as much as we can as quickly as possible. Um, so everybody that we talk to wants to know what's going to happen to their website, and so we started mapping out upgrade scenarios. Um, the thing about mapping out those scenarios is that WordPress is used in a lot of different ways, and every site on campus is a little bit different. Um, but that being said, we've identified sort of four typical scenarios for NC State websites. Um, that have sort of their own special pain points associated with them. Uh, so these may look sort of familiar to you. Uh, there's the vanilla WordPress scenario where it's just using WordPress out of the box. There's not a lot going on that changes how the editor functions. Um, there are sites with lots of short codes, and we've mentioned a couple of times we were all in on those short codes. They were the best thing ever for us, especially when combined with shortcut UI or shortcake. Um, uh, there are websites that use advanced custom fields for uh, more, less for metadata and more as a templating engine. Um, there are themes that we have on campus that were either built on campus or by external vendors that never even use the content function. They just use ACF uh, functions to pull in meta content and display it as these sort of, sort of proto blocks um, in ACF world. And then we have sites that use these page building plugins, um, Visual Composer, or Divi, or Beaver Builder, or you know, those three are examples of, of page building plugins or plugin type things, themes, I guess, for Divi. Um, those are examples of things that uh, are very well supported by some sort of a company that makes money off of WordPress. But then we have people on campus who somewhere along the way went out and bought something from Code Canyon or Theme Forest that's not supported anymore and hasn't been updated in six years and probably won't be updated when WordPress 5.0 comes out. And so that's a whole other scenario that you have to sort of plot out and plan for. Uh, we are not going to run through those scenarios because that takes a long time and every website is different and we could get mired down talking about those scenarios for a long time. But come talk to us at the snack break if you're curious about sort of what we've learned trying to figure that out. What's more important for you to take away is take some time to think through what are the commonalities and the differences between the websites that I manage and what are some of the pain points that are unique to those types of websites. Um, so we're responsible for thousands of websites, some with more responsibility than others. Uh, we have about 50 departments or units on campus that we directly manage, um, anything from building custom work, like custom themes and plugins to uh, they send us PowerPoint presentations with the changes that they want to make for their website, and we make them like, I don't know what it is about PowerPoint, but anyway. Um, so they send us the changes that, that they want to make. We also have open registration multi-sites um, uh, for student blogs and faculty blogs. We have a student orgs multi-site, um, club for whatever, uh, all in a multi-site that we manage. And then another multi-site that's sort of somewhere in between the sort of open registration services and uh, the really hands-on clients. All that adds up to thousands of websites. We are not going to upgrade all of them at the same time. That is a bad idea and would make for a very bad Tuesday. Um, instead, we're going to try to plot out how we can sort of take all these websites as different puzzle pieces and put them together into the smoothest path for us that we can make. Uh, so some of these websites are going to upgrade very quickly. Some of them are going to be on the Classic Editor plugin for a while because that's just how we're going to have to schedule them out. Um, to do that, we needed to start evaluating guten pain. Um, the sort of, you know, how, what are the pain points going to be for each of these specific uh, websites? And so we created the guten Dex, which you really have to want. Guten Dex is the Gutenberg pain index, and just mash it all together into guten Dex. 
Um, and so uh, this is an opportunity to, uh, number one, roll Gutenberg work into any new work that we're doing for them. Um, and then number two, um, uh, if there are websites that just haven't had any recent updates or haven't, haven't gotten the attention that they've needed for a while, Gutenberg is a great opportunity to update them to the latest campus brand or something like that. You know, do some of the long needed work that we just have been putting off. So as we uh, calculate our Guten decks, um, <coughs> so we're really looking at three main things. We're looking at what theme they're using, whether it's one of the standard themes that we like and support, or whether it's something else or something bad. Uh, we're looking at the plugins that they, they're using, and then we're looking at the users that we're supporting for that website. Some of them are going to handle this a lot better than others. Some of them are going to handle it fine with training. Some of them are going to be gung-ho about, like, I'm going to learn this and dive in and I'm excited about it. And some of them are going to give us the deer in the headlights look. Um, so we're not going to show you how we, we come up with our, our rating and our schedule, because this is all very specific to our users and our environment. But uh, these are the sorts of things that we're thinking about. Um, from that, we end up categorizing each site into, so Jen wrote these category names. We're cool, we got work in panic mode. Um, and then we put them into a timeline. Um, so this is our original uh, timeline of May through July as sort of early adopters, uh, people that we want to have giving us feedback early with the Gutenberg plugin. August to December, August being sort of a moving target of whenever WordPress 5.0 is released sometime this fall, we think. Um, as people who are going to be ready to hit the, hit the ground running relatively quickly. Um, next year, for the first six months, for people who are going to need a little more work, and then after that, for the people who are really going to need a lot of work and a lot of hand holding. So this is a screenshot of Jen's master spreadsheet. Uh, I was not joking about the category names. Uh, panic mode, we got this. Um, okay with some training, uh, they don't got this, things like that. This is how we function as a team. It's all very like rigorous and scientific. Um, so uh, I mentioned earlier, new work for 2018 is being uh, done in Gutenberg as soon as we can, or if it's not being done in Gutenberg, we're thinking and making plans for what it's going to look like when Gutenberg does happen for that website. Um, we're offering this custom training to all of our clients in addition to the workshops that we're offering to all of campus. Uh, I was trying to think yesterday about how many people have we put Gutenberg training in front of so far, and I think it's somewhere between like 100 and 200 people on campus, um, mainly focusing, yeah, maybe even more than that, uh, mainly focusing on the people who are going to have their day-to-day -day jobs impacted the most. Not so much students um, or faculty, but really the staff who keep the university running. Um, and then, uh, so existing sites are going to be scheduled to upgrade, and we're going to try to balance the easy sites and the hard sites as much as possible, again, so that we don't have one really bad Tuesday and then lots of easy days. <clears throat> I don't know why Tuesday. So from all of this, we think that from the day WordPress 5.0 is released, we can have our entire campus, or at least the sites that we support, using Gutenberg in 12 to 14 months. That is a very aggressive schedule for us, especially with the size of our team. It's going to take a lot of work and a lot of focus, but we think we can do it. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little more also about some of the tools that we're developing to try to make this happen. Um, so uh, if you combine Johannes Gul uh, Gutenberg with the NC State Wolf mascot, uh, you end up with Johannes Wolfenberg. He is the uh, unofficial mascot of all of our Gutenberg preparation, and all credit goes to our colleague Miles Elliott for drawing this beautiful, beautiful Johannes Wolfenberg. Um, so, <clears throat> the Johannes Wolfenberg is the plugin icon for the NC State Blocks plugin, which Jen mentioned earlier. This is a collaborative project. We're working with developers all across campus, which is super exciting because our campus gets very decentralized and siloed, and sometimes we don't talk to each other very well. Um, we're building some new Guten blocks in addition to the core blocks that match our campus brand, some of the things that we really like to see on campus websites that our communications group likes to design. Um, and then some blocks that are uh, designed to interact with other campus APIs and systems like the um, campus directory or things like that. Uh, we are super excited about block templates and people should talk about block templates more. Block templates are the best thing ever. Um, come talk to us during the snack break about block templates. And then uh, again, our colleague Miles Elliott wrote a simple plugin that um, runs through every uh, 
every uh, block that's available on a website and creates a block attributes glossary, uh, which is extremely helpful when you're building block templates and also when you're just trying to figure out how do blocks work uh, when you're trying to reverse engineer an existing core block and trying to uh, package that up or t you know, take lessons from that and package those lessons up into a new block that you're designing. Um, so the, we're going to share the links to the slides uh, and, at the very end, so go check out these things that we're sharing. We're really proud of the work that we're, we've done, and really what I mean is we're proud of the work that Miles has done. <laughs> we're just keep mentioning his name over and over again. So. Um, yes, yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we really are uh, Guten excited about Gutenberg. Um, we know that it's a lot of work, but we are genuinely happy to be doing it, and we think that it's an excellent step forward for WordPress, and it solves a lot of problems um, that have been, uh, you know, solved with hacky workarounds, extra plugins and themes, um, now are being solved with some native solutions. Uh, again, I'm super excited about block templates, can't even, can't. Um, and we're excited to be sharing our knowledge. Uh, again, WordPress is successful in large part due to a great community um, and how easy it is to find solutions to our problems or at least find someone else who has the same problem just by Googling, right? And so we're happy to be able to embrace this change and make cool things and have some of those problems and document them and uh, share all that with the community. And Miles said this, you know, Miles is not the only part of the team, okay? I'm just saying, he gets a lot of mention here, but he did say we have this great moment of chaos to take control of our destiny. And I had to give it to a stormtrooper, shout that out. So um, for you guys, when you decide to dive into Gutenberg, no, I'm sure you already do, that it's going to take some hard work, especially for those of you who are uh, in higher ed or in ed other enterprises that require a lot of organizational you know, management and coordination. It's going to take some time, it's going to take some patience, but it's going to happen. This is not some emerging technology that's going to disappear tomorrow. This is this is happening, um, and I strongly encourage you to embrace it sooner rather than later, and you will get through it. Um, some of our resources, again, slides from our Guten Day are available online, our blog posts where we lament and share uh, all of our uh, technical and um, you know, organizational difficulties. Frontenberg, we strongly encourage you to try that out on your campus or in your environment, but you're welcome to use ours. Um, again, we're part of the WP Campus Group, which is uh, a great organization for um, higher ed institutions using WordPress, and Brian runs that podcast. He lets me talk and say goofy things. Uh, our blog attributes glossary, and you can tweet us or email us anytime you want. Here is a link to the slides, and I think we have like two minutes. Look at that, 71, 79 slides. Woo, we got two minutes, all right. <laughs> No it's questions. also okay if you don't have questions. Yeah, we answered everything. Uh, you guys are there, there's a mic that's wandering around if you just want to like do some karaoke, just off the cuff. Um, yeah, Rachel here. Okay, so in this whole process, what was like the biggest surprise or the three you off the most you didn't expect? So my biggest surprise is that I knew more JavaScript than I thought I did. <laughs> <laughs> um, that so I, I guess. Uh, one of the things that we didn't talk about in the presentation, but that I've been thinking a lot about, is um, Gutenberg is a big change for WordPress, but as a developer, there are sort of lots of on-ramps into doing Gutenberg and block development. Uh, you don't have to dive right into writing your own custom block. You can start with theme work, um, you know, the changes that you're going to need to make for the, th for the, the block styling or adding a, a custom color palette and then sort of grow from there. Um, so in some sense, maybe a surprise is that it was easier than we expected to get started. Yeah, I would kind of piggyback on that and say my biggest surprise was that it's actually going to be okay. Because he wasn't lying. We had been paying attention. And it, for those of you, too, who tried out Gutenberg like last fall, maybe, I think the last time I had tried it was October. And I tried it, and I was like, oh, this is not going to go. And I was all ready to be like, let's find some code to hide this. This is not going to happen. <laughs> um, and, then, and then I tried it again, you know, come January or... Uh, so when we really started to get into it, and I was like, okay, we're going to be okay. There are a lot of brilliant, amazing, incredible things here, and I'm not just talking about the gallery. Um, there's, you know, there's some accessibility, like the, the color contrast, which got mentioned in the accessibility talk before this, the um, ability to set your headings and then preview that your heading structure is right. I mean, we were telling people that all the time from an end user perspective and educating people to use the web the right way. There's some great things that are core to that, and I think dot tips will also help with that. So there's a lot of end user improvements here if you can get it in front of people. Hey, do you guys have a ballpark percentage that are going to flip on? 
on day one, actual date, like literally in the first 24 hours, probably zero. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm going to wait for five zero one. Yeah. Um, and then I'll do it. I, I don't know. I don't know if, um, I think probably I would say between 10 and 15 percent of our sites will go pretty quickly. Um, and then it's just going to be, you know, working down the list from there. But we, we truly do have it turned on, uh, at least alongside the classic editor. Uh, we're out of time, sorry, in, in several places, so we're, we're using it. Come talk to us, you guys got a snack break, so we'll be hanging around for a while. Thank you very much, guys.